Hey everybody and welcome back to some more All The Mods 3 Expert Mode. Between episodes, I've spent a bit of time mostly doing more of the same stuff that we did in the last episode because as it turns out, this Expert Mode pack does have a fair bit of grind to it, but uh, the most important things that I've done between episodes are plant down a bunch of rubber trees, cut those trees down to get a bunch of rubber tree saplings. Right now, I think we have about 20 rubber tree saplings. Yeah, we got 20 rubber tree saplings in this chest here as well as quite a few rubber trees uh, over in this little rubber tree farming area that I've set up between episodes. And as I mentioned at the very end of the last episode, and now that we have these, what we can do is we can go ahead and craft up a few tree taps. We can take those tree taps over to the little spots of resin. And so long as we don't double tap the spot where the resin is, we should be able to get essentially an infinite amount of resin from these trees. That being that if you right click to pop off the resin, so long as you leave that little marker there, this tree will eventually grow more resin back. So we can just go around, get a bunch of resin, leave this for 10, 15, 20 minutes, however long it takes for the resin to grow back. And eventually when we return, we can do this all over again and get even more resin, which of course leads us nicely onto what we need to work on in today's episode. And that of course is a little bit of industrial craft too. Now, there has been a pack update between episodes. And so uh, right now it looks like we've not done any of these quests, but the reason for that is that there is a new quest right at the top here called Dimensions. This is simply another one of the information quests that you get at the start of the pack. And it says to prevent skipping progression, we have implemented game stages, which will restrict your access to certain dimensions until you have progressed to that point legitimately. So we're gonna go ahead and check mark that, at which point all of our quests that we've done previously uh, will then be completed for us. Essentially, all they've done here is they've made it so you can't go through to the nether until you've completed every single quest or at least all of the necessary quests inside of tier one because previously uh, the recipe for a flint and steel didn't actually require going through industrial craft 2. I'm not quite sure why I would have thought that if they wanted to block the nether off, they would have just made the flint and steel recipe require one of these carbon plates. It does say here, you'll realize you can't get to the nether without a fire source. Luckily, carbon plates can help you with that. I don't know how carbon plates help you with that because the flint and steel recipe doesn't require carbon plates. Maybe once upon a time it did, but nevertheless, now instead of just being able to build a portal and go to the nether at any point during the pack, you now have to complete the quest in this first section before you can go. Anyway, that's not what we're working on in today's episode. Today, we want to try and get quite a few of these Industrial Craft 2 machines. And to do that, we need to get quite a large number of refined iron ingots, something that we were going to do at the end of the last episode until we ran into the roadblock of realizing we didn't have any fuel for our blast furnace. So between episodes, people in the comment section have pointed out a couple of ways in which we can power our blast furnace. And I believe the main way that the pack wants you to do this is through the use of the coke oven. So to make the coke oven, we need a 27 coke brick. The coke brick, unlike the blast brick, is made individually. With the blast brick, we got three at a time. And that means to set up a coke oven, we need 27 seared stone. We need 108 bricks and 108 clay, which is why between episodes, I went mining. I used a good chunk of my pickaxe's durability on just mining cobblestone. And I got us quite a lot of seared stone here. Uh, I believe we even have a little bit more still available uh, in the smelter. We do indeed. We got one more sitting around in there. And speaking of the smeltery, I've also gone ahead and made this one block taller. And I've also added a few more of these seared drains around the outside of the smeltery so that we can pull out things faster or more things at once. So now you'll notice that we have uh, four drains, but we also have four casting tables and two casting basins. And the reason for that is that a lot of our early game gear making, ingot making, and plate making is done in the smeltery and also a lot of just our ingot smelting in general. And so if we wanted to, for example, uh, get a lot of gears, we could just make four gear casts and then start pulling out gears four at a time as opposed to waiting for each one to dry in the one casting table and then, you know, doing them one at a time that way. It's much, much faster to have more of them. And also it has the added benefit of allowing us to have multiple casts in multiple tables so that, for example, I don't have to keep coming back over to a chest, grab the right cast, replace the ingot cast, and then pull the ingot out and then replace it again. It's just faster if we have a few casts available to us. And in the case of things like that seared stone, we can now pull out two lots of seared stone at a time. And for example, if we wanted to smelt up a ton of iron, we could put in all of our iron ore and then pull it all out in block form, nice and fast with our two casting basins. But nevertheless, we should have, I think, everything it takes to make a coke oven. I have gone ahead and smelted up a bunch of brick and we already have quite a large amount 
of clay. And so if we go and shift click that recipe in, we can get 27 coke brick. And much like the blast furnace before it, the coke oven is a three by three by three multi-block. I'm fairly certain we can have it right next to the blast furnace. I don't think that interferes with the multi-block formation. And so if we do something like this and then right click in the middle with our engineer's hammer, we get a coke oven. Nice. And so with this, what we can do is we can grab some of the coal that we have in this chest. And if we place that coal into the coke oven, that is going to slowly but surely, and I mean really, really slowly but surely, you can see the progress bar at the top here at 10, 11, 12, 13%. It is unbelievably slow, but eventually it will turn all of that coal into coal coke. And that coal coke can then be used as a fuel in the blast furnace for turning iron into refined iron ingots. And as a byproduct, we also get some creosote oil, which as it turns out is necessary, which is why the quest then goes on to this next quest for treated wooden planks. Those treated wooden planks are made with wood and crude oil. And then those treated wooden planks are also needed in Batania. We need them to make living wood, which is needed for making quite a lot of stuff in the Batania mod. But getting ahead of ourselves for now, that's gonna help us slowly but surely get some uh, coal coke that we can put in our blast furnace. However, whilst we wait for that to finish, there is also another method of powering the blast furnace and that is with charcoal. And as I alluded to a little bit in the last episode, you can do this with wood piles. Now, I didn't know how these worked in the last episode, but between episodes, I've done a bit of Googling and I figured out the way that these work. So essentially, I'm gonna go ahead and grab nine of these. We do need a flint and steel to make this work. And so so let's go ahead and quickly grab both some flint and some iron and craft ourselves up a regular vanilla Minecraft flint and steel. So the way that this works is you take your wooden piles and you surround them with one of a number of blocks. You can use any of the blocks listed in JI here. So clay works, loam works, endstone, uh, endstone bricks, dirt, gravel, netherrack, and ash brick. Now, I think... Alongside dirt, I think grass also works, but just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go with gravel for now because we have such a large amount of it. And so essentially the way that this works, and it's a little bizarre, but you can put down gravel like this, for example, and then put the wood piles on top of them like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We then need to fully surround this wood pile with our chosen material. This is one of those situations where gravel maybe isn't the best choice simply because it sinks. You don't need the, to have a material uh, in this bottom corner here, but of course uh, you can't have gravel here without having a block down here. And so for now, we're just gonna fill this all in with gravel like so. And then on the top, we're also gonna cover up every single block apart from one. Now, I don't believe it matters which block you don't cover up. You just need to make sure that one of the wood piles are not covered up. You can then take your flint and steel, light this on fire, quickly cover it with gravel, and then you'll notice that there are still particle effects coming out of the top of this gravel. And so what happens now is over the course of the next 10 minutes, that's 10 real world minutes, it's a very, very, very slow process. But over the course of the next 10 minutes, all of those wood piles are going to turn into ash blocks. And when you break those ash blocks, you will get some ash and also more importantly for us, some charcoal. So again, if we look at uh, this in JI, you can see that using gravel, we should get 10 charcoal per ash block. And so because we have nine, we should, in 10 minutes, get 90 charcoal from this setup. Now, nine is not a magic number. I don't believe. I'm fairly certain that you can make this as big or as small as you like. You're going to put 15 of these uh, inside of this. So long as they're all completely surrounded, the system should work just fine. You can also do it with just one wood pile as well, if you'd like. But uh, that is, if you'd like, a way to get charcoal. Now, I should point out that charcoal is not really that good in the blast furnace. Like it takes a lot of charcoal to make even just a few ingots of refined iron. And so we really do want to try and get a large amount of coal coke if possible. And so essentially guys, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go away because we've got a lot of waiting around to do here. We've got to we'll wait for all this uh, coal coke. We might also want to get uh, some kind of tank to put all of this creosote in because once the creosote tank uh, fills up internally, then it will stop making more coal coke. So we need to periodically empty that out to make sure that this can keep going. We also need more lava for our smeltery, so I'll go get some more of that. Um, but essentially, I'm gonna go away. I'm gonna go do some mining because if we look at the recipes for 
most of these machines here, we need a good chunk of tin, we need a good chunk of copper, we need a lot of iron, uh, but more importantly, every single machine frame needs invar plates, and invar plates are made in the smeltery by alloying together iron and nickel. Right now, we don't have any nickel, so we are going to have to go and find some of that, and on top of that, uh, every single machine needs electronic circuits, and electronic circuits need redstone, which, as of right now, I think we have maybe two pieces of. Yeah, so I'm going to go away. I'm going to wait for all of our coal to turn into coal coke. I'm going to go down into the mines, get some more coal, get some redstone, get some nickel, come back. I'm also probably going to uh, make our first few pieces of refined iron as well, because again, the blast furnace, much like its brother over here, the coke oven is extraordinarily slow. And so it does take quite a while to make even just a couple of pieces of refined iron. And it might not even be a terrible idea to make multiple coke ovens and multiple blast furnaces just to speed this process up to a, a bearable rate, because right now it is just so, so slow. But uh, like I said, I'm going to go away and I'll be back in a second. All right. So not too long later, and my plans have already been thwarted by the pack so we have a few different issues here the first issue is that it's more difficult than i thought to make a bucket so previously you may remember in the last episode we made four clay buckets and used those to fill up the sea tank and i just a moment ago picked up the sea tank and i was about to head over to the lava area when i realized we didn't have a bucket now if we look at the recipe for a bucket here my first thought was we grab three iron out of a chest we craft it in the standard bucket format and we get a bucket unfortunately being an expert pack, that is not the case. In order to make a bucket, we need three iron plates and one uninsulated copper cable, which is made with a copper plate and some wire cutters, the wire cutters themselves requiring a few of these refined iron ingots. And so uh, what we should probably do is grab some of our cold coke and begin making at least a few of these refined iron ingots here. So we'll do iron and cold coke. And as you can see, very, very slow indeed. We'll be waiting a good few years for that to finish. Uh, the other problem, of course, is my pickaxe. It has broken. I did manage to get a good amount of redstone, a little bit of extra coal, as well as some copper, some tin, some lead, you know, some iron, stuff like that. Unfortunately, no nickel. According to JEI, nickel is quite far down. If we hover over the ore here, you'll see it's found in caves under Y level 20. Now, I did manage to find a cave that was around Y level 23, but because of the way that the ores have been changed in this pack, you can't just dig down and then strip mine to find nickel. You have to find like an open cave that goes down to below Y level 20. So I do need to go and do a bit more kind of searching uh, in my you know, cave area to try and find some nickel. But in order to mine the nickel, I of course need a fully functioning pickaxe. And that is where our vitrified sand sharpening kits come in that we made a few episodes back. Now, normally the way that you would repair a tool like we did with our flint tool is you would put the tool into the tool station and then you would put the material used to make the tool around the outside and that would repair it. The cool thing about the sharpening kits is that you can use them anywhere. So if we craft our vitrified sand pickaxe with a vitrified sand sharpening kit, no matter where we are in the world, we can instantly repair our pickaxe, which means so long as we carry this around, we've essentially got a whole extra pickaxe worth of durability that we can use whenever we like, which is pretty cool. And the fact that these stack as well basically means you can carry around six 64 pickaxes worth of durability within one slot of your inventory, which makes really long mining trips so much more feasible. Now, whilst we wait for uh, this very, very slow process of making uh, refined iron here, what I am going to do is make a plate cast, because of course, if we're going to get uh, any of these plates made, we do of course need a plate cast. And so uh, let's throw in some iron. Let's also throw in some copper. Again, I'm fairly certain that iron and copper do not form any kind of alloy, and so it should not be a problem uh, having those two in the smeltery at the same time. Now, the plate cast over here is made by pouring molten gold over a plate. I do have some molten gold in the smeltery already. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the easiest plate for us to make that doesn't require the plate cast is a clay plate. So two clay gets you an unfired clay plate from ceramics. And then if you smelt that in a regular furnace, that should get us a fired clay plate, which, as per usual, we can put in our casting table, pull gold over it, and generate a plate cast. Now, I think this is the first cast for which I'm going to make two because we need a lot of plates in today's episode. As I showed before, every single machine needs a machine block. Every single machine block needs four invar plates on top of the fact that every single electronic circuit needs an iron plate and then other machines just need plates in general. We are going to need a lot of plates. And so if we do something like this, we can pull our gold to the bottom. We can right click on both of these to make two plate casts simultaneously. And then once those are done, we can then put our iron to the bottom to start making multiple iron plates at the same time. Nice. So we'll do that, 
Uh, we will hopefully get our third bit of refined iron any second now. Once we have that, we can, of course, make our wire cutters, which I will bookmark, uh, those requiring the three refined iron and two sticks. We could use Sodas Quartz Crystals and Tin Ingots, actually. Do we have... I don't think we have any Sodas Quartz Crystals, and I also don't think that I've seen any Sodas Quartz or in the overworld. Now, it's quite possible... Yeah, you'll notice there's no Certus Quartz Ore here. There's only End Certus Quartz Ore and Nether Certus Quartz Ore. I think the same is true for Diamonds. There is a Diamond Ore, but I believe it only spawns in the Nether. If we look in the quest book here, you'll see it says you may have noticed the significant lack of diamonds in the overworld. Well, zombie pigmen have taken a liking to those shiny gems. So we have to get to the Nether in order to get diamond ore. And I think that that might also be true for Certus Quartz ore, simply due to the fact that I don't see any normal version of the ore. And I don't see another way of making it that doesn't require the ore already. And so I think we are going to have to go with the refined iron recipe for the time being. Nevertheless, that should not be an issue. We now do have all three refined iron ingots, and so we can craft that up with uh, a copper plate. Copper plates, of course, still need to be pulled out, but we'll do that like so. Um, I should also probably just put a lot more of this iron in here and start pulling the iron out in a block form so we can start putting those uh, iron ingots. And maybe even actually, can we just put iron blocks directly into the machine there? That might actually work. Is there such thing as a block of refined iron? Refined iron. There is. Okay, so we can just put blocks of iron directly into the blast furnace. We don't get quite as much slag. We only get four per block of iron, where normally you would get nine. And that could be an issue, given that uh, we do need the slag for a couple of these machines here. But I think on the whole, um, I think it will be faster doing it in block form. I don't think that the block takes nine times as long as an ingot would. I think it is slower, but faster overall, if that makes sense. Uh, either way, back over here, copper plate with the wire cutters gets us some uninsulated copper wire. And then if we craft that up with our three iron plates like so, we finally get ourselves a bucket. Nice. Now, the next problem that I ran into was the problem of getting this creosote oil out of the coke oven. Because as I mentioned, once the coke oven fills up with creosote oil, it will stop making coal coke, which is a problem. So, to do this, we need somewhere to put the creosote oil. And if I'm not mistaken, the earliest storage unit that we have for storing fluids is this guy right here, the stone drum. In fact, if you look at any of the other options for early game storage, for example, the basic fluid tank from Mechanism or the portable tank from Thermal Expansion, both of those recipes require the stone drum. And so the game is kind of pushing you to make the stone drum before you make any of those. Thankfully, it's not too difficult to make. It's just six seared stone, two stone pressure plates, and one bowl, which is made with two iron and one stick. And so just as soon as we sleep here, which I'm going to do... Oh, we've run out of lava, of course. Are you fool. I was going to say we should go and put some more cobblestone into our smell tray to make some more uh, seared stone there. But of course, we're now out of lava and thus can't smell anything in our uh, smell tree just yet. And so once again, guys, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to quickly pop over to the lava area. I'm going to fill this tank up with lava. We're going to smelt up a bunch of seared stone and we'll come back to hopefully being able to make a stone drum. And a little bit of lava later, we now have the six seared stone that we need. We also have everything it takes here to make that bowl. We actually get six bowls, and then that should be everything to make a stone drum. Nice. So this we can go ahead and put down, I guess for now, right about here. I'm actually not entirely sure how many buckets this can hold. I think it might be 64, but I'm not too sure on that. And so now what we can do is we can open up the Coke oven. We can put our bucket in the top right slot here, and that's going to fill that bucket up with creosote, which we can then right click onto our stone drum. And that might actually tell us there it does. We can hold 16 buckets here. So not a crazy amount, actually. It holds just a little bit more than this internal tank here, which can hold 12 buckets. And so we might have to make a few more of these stone drums here, or maybe even look uh, to upgrading to an iron drum at some point, this one right here, which uh, does require cold iron and obsidian. So actually, that might be a little uh, further down the line for us uh, than we're at right now. So maybe just a few more of these stone drums, because to be honest, they're not too difficult to make, especially given the fact that you get six balls at a time from that bowl recipe. But nevertheless, let's go and put some iron into here, uh, get that smelting up so we can make some more iron blocks to make yet more uh, refined iron here. And speaking of refined iron, we of course have this little experiment over here, which should now be done. You'll know it's done when there are no more smoke particles coming out of the top and there's no more fire sound near it either and so now if we go ahead and break the gravel here you'll see there we go we have this ash and if you break the ash you get charcoal nice and actually quite a bit of it as well you'll see up to 48 charcoal there and uh, we'll get rid of the rest of this gravel here 
And for each one, we should get uh, somewhere between like 10 and 16 charcoal. I'm actually not sure if it's the same every time. So we're at 48 now. That's three of them. And that, that was only trying to break one, but they break so fast. Uh, but 48 up to a stack and a half. So we actually got another 48 there from the three. So we're actually getting uh, what appears to be 16 per block here, which is more than it says we get from here. It says we're only going to get 10 and two ash, but it seems like we're actually getting uh, a full 16 from each set, which is really quite nice. And so now we've got uh, just over two stacks of charcoal. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, if we come on over to the blast furnace and I put uh, this charcoal in, you'll see that once the uh, the coal coke has run its course, which it'll do fairly soon here, that the charcoal really isn't anywhere near as good. You'll see the coal coke is lasting quite a while here. And so even though this is very slow, you don't really need like hundreds of pieces of, uh, of coal coke to get the job done. However, I think you might need quite a lot of charcoal if you wanted to use charcoal to get the whole job done, because as you can see here, it is much, much slower. However, if you did a large scale you know, version of what we just did here with a ton of wood, you could probably get away with using charcoal for this because the charcoal really isn't that hard to uh, to get. It's just basically a ton of wood. And so really either way works. I guess for now, we'll probably stick with the coal cog just because we're making uh, quite a large amount of it. And uh, did we complete the quest there? Oh, of course, we've not completed any of these quests yet because they did make a change to the first quest here. The first quest now requires that nickel that we don't have yet. And so uh, just as soon as we get four nickel ingots, that should then complete uh, quite a few of, uh, of these quests. Again, we will have to uh, tear down both our blast furnace and our uh, coke oven to get the coke brick and the blast brick just for those quests to uh, to register. But once again, guys, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go away. I'm going to once again head down into the mines, see if I can't find the nickel that we need to make our invar to get finally started on making some of these industrial craft two machines. And so once again, I'll be back in a second. And quite a bit of mining later, we now have a whopping seven nickel ore. So it turns out this stuff is kind of rare. There's not a whole lot of it in the mines. And I also found that there's not a whole lot of it on the surface either. Most of the nickel ore that I found was kind of hidden behind other ore. So I would be mining iron or coal or redstone, and then I would just find some nickel kind of hidden behind it. So just a heads up for if you're playing this pack, the nickel can be somewhat tricky to find. There is some on the surface, but uh, a good chunk of my seven was found underneath other ores. Thankfully, you do get three invar for every one nickel. Uh, the ratio is two iron and one nickel makes three invar. And so uh, this seven nickel should be able to get us to 21 invar ingots, which should be enough to make at least a few of these industrial craft machines here. However, real quick, before we do that, uh, just to complete this first quest, I am going to put four nickel in here and pull that four nickel out in ingot form. Over here, we do now have uh, almost two blocks of refined iron. And let me tell you, if you thought that the refined iron ingots were slow, that is nothing compared to this progress bar for the refined iron blocks. This thing takes forever. It takes such a long time to turn one block of iron into one block of refined iron. But as I said earlier, I think it is faster than doing, you know, nine iron individually. And so now we do have quite a nice 23 refined iron ingots, which I think should be enough for us to make at least a couple of these industrial craft machines. The first machine that we need to make here, and is this nickel? It, oh, I'm an idiot. It's not, there's copper in here and copper and nickel makes constantan. Ah, okay. That could be useful if we need the constantan for something, if we want to make a uh, centrifugal separator at some point in the future, or maybe just, you know, some uh, constantan plates. I'm assuming these will come in useful at some point, but for the time being, it does mean uh, that I have to put two more nickel in here just to complete that quest. And it also means that the amount of uh, invar that we can get just went down from uh, 21 to like 15. So uh, not the greatest start there, but if we look over here, uh, the first quest in the quest line is, well, there's actually two first quests. There's the machine block quest and there is the generator quest. The generator is, of course, required to power all of our machines. It is made with one iron furnace, three refined iron ingots, and then one RE battery. The RE battery being made with 14 ingots, two redstone, and then one copper cable. The copper cable being made with three copper ingots and a bunch of industrial craft two rubber. I have begun smelting up a bunch of that rubber in here. We've got uh, 47 more uh, in this chest. I did go around and uh, harvest a good few of these. You can see already. Ready. they're starting to come back which is fantastic do we finally have what it takes to get four nickel ingots
ingots. It looks like we do. And so finally, we should be able to complete that first quest and, and move on to a bigger and better quests. Now, uh, there is a reward for this first quest now. It is one tier one coin. And I believe at the moment, this isn't too useful. But the idea is that there is a new tab at the bottom called the arcade, which is essentially a shop of sorts. And in the shop, you can then purchase certain items using different tier coins. So uh, this is just a readme that explains how the shop works. For now, I'm going to check that off. And as you'll see at the moment, it's kind of not working. None of these are done yet. And so right now, I don't think the coin is all too useful for us. And so for the moment, I'm just going to go and put this in one of our chests here. But later on down the line, we should be able to use that to purchase certain items that are not craftable in the pack, like these crates here from Actual Editions. These are pretty good. They're like chests, but bigger and take up less space. Uh, but Unfortunately, they're not makeable in the expert version of all the mods 3. You have to unlock them uh, through the shop, which as of time of recording is currently uh, kind of a work in progress. So we need at least one of these iron furnaces. After we make the generator, the first machine that we're probably going to want to make is the macerator. The macerator is made with three slag, two concrete, one machine block. The machine block is four refined iron ingots, four invar plates, and then one clear glass. Clear glass is made just like regular glass, aka with sand, but instead of being put into a regular furnace, it is made in the smeltery. So uh, we'll put like four in here for now, just to give us the ability to make four machine frames if we need to. Uh, we'll also begin pulling out these blocks of copper. I don't think we need any of our copper in plate or gear form, at least not for the macerator, the generator, or the electric furnace. Uh, we do need a lot more iron off that electric furnace there. Uh, thankfully, the electric furnace is not a requirement just yet. And while we're waiting for that sand to finish up, we should probably get going on the invar as well. So what we'll do here is we'll put in uh, four nickel, like so. And with that four nickel, we will put in eight iron, like that. That is going to get us the 12 invar that we need to make some of our uh, machine blocks. Let's go ahead and sleep so that we don't get surprised by any mobs in the night. And then hopefully we are pretty close to our invar here. We are indeed. That's always good. Liquid glass can be pulled out into the casting basins like so. Uh, each one of those is going to get us one piece of clear glass, which is not only useful for our industrial craft two machines, but is also a pretty nifty building block because it allows you to create seamless windows without the you know, block edges that Minecraft glass normally has. There is our invar. It's done, which is fantastic. We'll start pulling that out in a plate form. We've got the refined iron, so that is good. And I think that is everything we need to make our first machine block. It is indeed. We just need two more of these invar plates, which thankfully uh, do not take too long whatsoever. While we're waiting for those to cool, we'll pull out two more blocks of clear glass. These two are now done. And so that should be everything it takes to make a machine block. Nice. And then from there, we can go and begin crafting up some of these copper cables. I'll make as many as we can because we're definitely going to need more than 18 going forward here. We now need two redstone and one iron plate. We currently have four iron in there, so that is perfect. We'll pull those out. We'll grab a little bit of redstone out of here, grab both those iron plates, and that should be our first electronic circuit taken care of. Nice. As for the slag, that should be available over in here. It is. We have 20 slag, which is fantastic, more than we need at this moment in time. And then finally, the last item required to make the macerator is concrete. Concrete can be made with slag, clay, gravel, and water, or you can replace the slag with sand, which I think we're going to do because we've got quite a bit of sand lying around in here. We are getting a little low on clay. Uh, we also have zero water, but thankfully there's a little pond right out here. Uh, so I might end up having to go do some more clay harvesting between episodes. And uh, I'll probably have to go further afield as well because we have kind of torn through almost all of the nearby reserves of clay. There's just so much of it required uh, in the early game here. But this is concrete from immersive engineering. For now, we'll just take the eight because we really don't need that much of it. And kapow, we have a macerator. Nice. Now, again, I think our quests are currently a bit broken because we need to tear down our blast furnace, which I guess we can actually uh, do right about now because it's not currently working on anything. I would like to get a second stone drum before we tear down our coke oven. This one over here is now full with the 16 buckets of creosote oil, and I'd like to get the extra, you know, 11 buckets that we have in there before we tear the whole thing down. But for now, if we grab all 27 of this blast brick, we should be able to uh, to finally register that quest. There we go, that quest is now completed. We do have another quest uh, that requires four iron plates. Again, I think we have two iron still left in here, we do. Let's also put 
yet more iron in there so we can get those four iron plates for that quest at which point we should see this quest and the machine block quest taken care of which does give us another coin as well to spend in the shop in the future while we wait for that what do we need for the generator the generator uh, requires the iron furnace which we've made it requires the refined iron which we already have we need four tin and we need a copper cable we have the copper cable and we also have exactly 14 and so that should be everything to make an re battery and thus everything it takes to make a generator nice and so the whole point of making the macerator in the first place is that this finally gives us the ability to duplicate our ores up until this point uh, the smeltery has been smelting ores into ingots at a one-to-one -one ratio so one iron ore equals one iron ingot which is fine but not ideal the macerator allows us to turn one iron ore into two iron ingots or one nickel ore into two nickel ingots etc etc and so uh, that is going to be really useful for getting more out of the ores that we have already now we don't really have much space here, and so I think what I'm going to do is, uh, if I take my torches out of my shield slot, you can shift right click certain blocks in the game, such as chests here, to move them. And I'm going to temporarily set up a bit of a janky storage system over here, like this. I think in the next episode, we might start looking at a basic logistics pipe system, just to make our storage setup a little bit easier to deal with. But for now, I'm going to move these guys over to here, and we're going to put our first machines down right about here i think so we'll have the macerator here we'll have our generator right about there the generator can power the macerator just being next to it like this and so now if we grab some of our coal and put that coal into the generator we should start to see the power bar in the macerator going up nice and once this uh, little lightning bolt is full we'll then see uh, the power backing up in the generator itself if we wanted to we could also do the optional quest here of making a bat box which allows us to store excess power as, as kind of a buffer and uh, stop doing stuff like this where we're kind of wasting this bit of coal because the generator is already full uh, but for the time being what we can now do is we can put our iron ore into the macerator and slowly but surely not quite as slowly as the coke oven but still quite slowly it's going to turn one iron ore into two iron ore pieces and at that point we could either put those iron ore pieces into the furnace i think unless that's been changed um, and potentially even uh, into the smeltery as well there's two crushed iron ore let's go ahead and check out jei here we can indeed smelt this in a regular furnace which is good to know uh, it doesn't look like we can smelt this in the smeltery so we do have to go through the furnace before we can get to the smeltery which does lead me to this guy right here the electric furnace which i would very much like to get because we can run this on the same power that we're generating for the macerator and thus not have to put fuel in both this furnace and this generator we can just have the one generator powering all of our stuff and we can really start to automate this in a much cleaner way so for this we need four redstone we need another blast brick so we are going to have to get one more bronze ingot we also need two of those electronic circuits one of them thankfully we already have and we need two more iron furnaces which of course means significantly more iron and so um what is probably the best course of action here is to uh make our iron this way with the macerator and the furnace just because we get more iron from our ore than we would uh, otherwise we're very close actually we've got 13 of the 16 iron that we need in order to make those two iron furnaces uh, electronic circuit wise i think we're just missing an iron plate really because the copper cable isn't too difficult for us to make and then after that we need the blast brick which is of course uh, copper and tin in here so we'll do three copper and one tin which we currently don't have but we definitely do have a uh, tin ore in here we've got quite a bit of it as well that's going to get us the four copper that we need while we wait for that do we have what it takes to make another electronic circuit we very almost do we just need a little bit more in the way of rubber here so if we quickly smelt up four of those that should get us everything and that does lead us on to one of the next machines that we are going to make uh, probably at the start of the next episode and that is the extractor i think i mentioned it in the last episode but the extractor essentially allows us to turn uh, not only rubber wood into rubber which is huge given that we have um, i think well over a stack of rubber wood so in an extractor we can turn that into yet more rubber but it also allows us to get even more rubber from our sticky resin because unlike the one-to-one -one ratio that you get in a regular furnace in an extractor you get three rubber for every one sticky resin so much much better value there and so now back over here we should be able to make six more copper cable we can we should be able to turn that into another electronic circuit we can indeed and then now the only thing that we are missing is these two and finally, of course, the blast brick, which we can get just as soon as we pull out one ingot worth of bronze, like so. Nice. And that gets us 
the blast brick. We actually need a few more things there. We need uh, some brick and we also need two more of the porcelain brick. Now, we've got one on fire porcelain, so I guess I'll get that on there real quick. We also have uh, some more quartz that I got whilst mining. And so if we just do a one, two, and three, that's going to get us the second one of those that we need. Um, as for the brick, I guess we just need to smelt up six clay. I guess we could probably also do with getting maybe a few more furnaces. Like I say, ideally, we're not going to be using this too much longer. I'd like to replace it with the electronic furnace, but even when we get the electronic furnace, it's still going to be quite slow. Now, there is a way we can speed up the Industrial Craft 2 machines, and that is with overclockers. And thankfully, the overclockers don't seem too difficult to make. This one requires three 10K coolant cells, uh, two copper cable, and one electronic circuit. The 10K coolant cells are made with a bucket of water and 14 ingots. So really not too hard to make. The difficult part is providing enough power to the machines to run them with the overclockers. Because the overclockers, while they make the machines faster, they exponentially increase the amount of power required. And the amount of power required goes up faster than the speed does. And so if you make your macerator twice as fast, it could use, you know, three, four, five times as much power as it normally would. And so uh, we would definitely have to get a better source of power than this lonely generator if we want to get um, a decent number of overclockers. But that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, let's make some blast brick. Let's make ourselves an electronic furnace. Let's put that electronic furnace maybe in the ground. Can we move these machines with the, the shift click? We cannot. Okay, that's a little annoying. But essentially what I was thinking here is if we kind of dig this up a little bit, we can put our electronic furnace here and then just have a hopper that feeds directly from the macerator down into the electronic furnace. Now, I know in Industrial Craft 2, if you break a machine, then the machine is destroyed and you just get back the machine block. I'm not entirely sure if we can break this machine without it being destroyed, I'm not going to risk it right now. And so for the time being, I'm just going to put this furnace down here. We'll make a regular old Minecraft hopper. And by that, I mean, we will grab the pre-existing wooden hopper that we have in here. And then from there, we should be able to do this. And we also do need to get power over to the electronic furnace. That is where our copper cables come in. We can run them along like so. There we go. And so now this should be able to transfer power over to the furnace. And if we were to, for example, put in some tin ore, that tin ore should be macerated down into two crushed tin ore, and then from there, sent along into the electronic furnace, and then smelted into two tin ingots. And then, of course, ideally, we would like those tin ingots to go from the electronic furnace over to a chest, or maybe even uh, into a storage drawer, which we haven't started with just yet. We've not made any of these, but uh, they're almost certainly going to be needed very shortly, because as you can see, our chests here are getting a little bit full and a little bit messy. But once again, that is a problem for future Isaac. And there we go. There is our tin ingots all nice and cooked up, which is fantastic. And with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up with today's episode of all the mods 3 expert mode there as always if you did enjoy the video and you want to see more all the mods 3 in the future be sure to go ahead and hit that like button it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out as always thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>